two, one. All right. Woo! Oh my god, give me the water. It's a pod water? Pod Are you hungover? Pod, hey, Frazier, no, but... Oh my god. I feel like... <laughs> what was that? What is wrong, Sarah? It's Monday. I know, it's Monday. You guys, welcome to the Hey Frazier podcast. I am your host, Sarah Frazier, along with the crew that is in here. AJ is here, who is our producer. Luis is our digital content creator. We have so much news. I feel like like people on this show, people that work for this show are making moves. This show is making moves. I'm a little excited. We have a big announcement that we're going to make on Wednesday. I'm like really excited. Oh, we're not making it today. We're going to make it on no, Wednesday. No, we're going to make it on Wednesday. Yeah, I don't right. I don't even want because I don't want to jinx it. We have a final meeting about it today after the show and then it will be a go and then I will not be able to stay off social media. I'll be so excited. I mean, it will I'm, be hard for me to contain myself. I'm really excited too and I'm just like going along for the ride and if it ends up working out, I will be the happiest person ever. Really? No, will that mean that you'll stop looking for other jobs like if it, when this one comes through? Confirmed. Yes, <laughs> I can finally say yes. I will not look for another job, Sarah. I will feel I will feel safe, and I will not have to look anywhere else for another job. So you have me. You have me locked oh, okay. in if this works out. Good. Good. All right. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, anyway, look. So we have so much to talk about. I feel like it is a culture pop culture overload. In fact, today I was out all weekend long. You guys know me if you've listened to this podcast forever. I usually go to bed every night almost religiously, like in bed at nine to nine thirty. Like uh, I mean, like almost if not every earlier. Night. Yeah. Completely. And I, you know, turned out now I don't want to go anywhere. I get invited to all these great events. I don't care. I don't want to go. And oftentimes now I look at like award shows and everything and I think, oh my God, if my life is headed there, I hope the fuck they don't invite me. Like I really do. I think to myself, what am I going to do if I got to go to the MTV Music Awards and be on the fucking red carpet? You sound like a bitch, Sarah. I know. I People know. would love but to I'm go to the like, MTV Awards. Oh board. God. It's so, really? Okay. I'm, I would, I would give my left hand to go to these things. And you're like, <laughs> well, I the MTV Music Awards? Ew. That's why you're on the show. Because one, for your talent, and two, that I want you to <laughs> no. go to these on our behalf, on the show's behalf. One hot, I'm, I'm there. Like, done. You don't even have to ask me. I mean, I like, I push my, I push us to go on these events. Like, I'll email people, and sometimes we hear back, sometimes we don't. And good to know that I'm the only, the only one that's going to be going. Oh, my God. I forward you stuff all the yeah, time. She does. There was this beer company that's having some concert they want to take yes. you to in the, in the North Woods or I already, something. I already make, like, made my plans for it. Really? Are you going? Well, yeah. Yeah, but I think, but I think it um, it conflicts with work too because we're always working. Oh. Like even on a weekend, we work and then we go have fun. Like this weekend was so busy, but it was really fun. But it was busy. Oh my god, yeah, it was so and, busy. And I wanted to take a, a round of applause for you because you went out and you actually drank. Like what? Two Saturday I and went out, Sunday. I went out in Leesburg. I was out Lees- in Leesburg, Virginia. For those of you who you know, for those of you who listen, and I was thinking about that. I've been listening to, to some of the podcast episodes, and I'm like, God, we haven't reset in a while. We have a lot of new listeners. For those of you who don't know, the Hey Fresh podcast is almost three years old. It'll be three years old this December of 2018, which is bananas. We got to have a party. I can't even believe it. I know. We have to have a party. And that's all thanks to you guys. You guys have, like, the sponsors that we have. Because I'm really torn about charging. Like, I'm really torn about doing a subscription-based show because I don't want that for you guys. I want to, like, share everything I know. I always want to entertain you. I want to infuriate you. I want you to come (laughs) here for all your love and your hate. Okay? I want us to be the one-stop shop. Okay? Where sometimes you tune in and you're like, that bitch can't stand her yeah and then other times you're like you know what i think that girl's actually kind of funny like i get a lot of good good hair and i'll send her a dick pic like that like all that's all the stuff i want you know really you do enjoy (laughs) some good dick pics I have some funny, I'm getting like crazy. This is how I know too that the show is succeeding because I'm starting to get very b- bizarre messages that I used to get. Like when I was on the radio, yes. every day I get tons of emails and dick pics and love proclamations. Wait, and I s- always want the dirt on people's lives. So please always email me, Sarah at HeyFresh.com. If you're going through something, most likely I can relate because I'm batshit crazy too. But I want to hear it. So I, I usually get like a lot of email. Then when the podcast started, people were trying to find me, like, where have I been? Because my background is, for for people who don't know and, and are just tuning in for the first time, so my whole career started in D.C. like 10 years ago on radio. So, I, like, my big break was co-hosting on 99.5 on the on the show called The Kane Show, which was on Top 40. It was, like, this whole, like, I don't even know how to describe it because it wasn't your typical morning show. It was more like four friends having this just really open conversation every day that was, like, funny as hell. And everyone had great chemistry. It was amazing. So I was there for six years. I left, always wanted to bet on myself. And then I briefly had a show on 107.3 with Ty and Mel. 
which was great. It's kind of like my entree back. And throughout the time, I've contributed at Fox 5 DC, which is the local Fox affiliate here in town and done lifestyle stories. And then I started this podcast. So now I'm beginning to get people again like, oh, my God, I found you. And I just went through a divorce. Do you want to see my penis? And I'm always like, this is awesome. (laughs) This is how I know the show is working. No, that's so great. I love I love going back on your story because I wa- listened to Hot 99.5 and The Kane Show in high school. So that just goes to show you like how amazing and like how big your grasp was on the area. And I was like, 21 I at the time when I lo- when I started that job. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd so, just like, been able to drink. Just. Like you were mm-hmm. just turning 21. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so I mean, that's it's incredible. It's the shade I, over 30. So we're going to, at the end of the show, you have to read some of these inbox, the, the, these DMs you're getting. Oh, pineapple meal today is out of control. Okay. <laughs> it's true. It is. We have pineapple meal is a segment we do at the end of every single Monday show where we read your text messages, your Instagram DMs, your emails to Sarah at HeyFresh.com. Pretty soon we're going to take phone calls so then you can just call anything you need. And it's feedback, advice. If you want to rant and rave about me, I get that too sometimes. So all that. We do it all. I we can't wait. All. I can't wait to take calls. Oh, I know. Me too. So I can't fun. wait. Uh, look, a couple of housekeeping things we got to talk about, and then we have to talk so much pop culture because I don't even know where to start. Miss America was on last night. Mac Miller died. Uh, Serena Williams on the tennis court. That story continues to have major legs of people that either think Serena was. I think the word hysterical is like a terrible word, but a lot of people are online are like, she was in bad form. She was hysterical. She shouldn't have acted that way. And then other people are like, men get away with this all the time. John McEnroe. It's I mean, true. I just like how relevant she stays. Like she's always yeah, in she's, the media, like not only being for being like the top one of the top tennis players, but just for being controversial. And I love that shit. Like I love when people dabble in all the worlds. Like oh, yeah, 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 they do. Reality, like babies. I love it. I love NFL it. NFL was on yesterday. Am I the only one? I, I went, you know, because I hear, you know, from our nutsack president, who's always like, no one's watching the NFL anymore. Like, ratings are the lowest. So you're like, oh, you know, I wonder if they're being affected. Then I went to a bar yesterday because I was out this weekend. I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Bitch I'm out. was out, y'all. Bitch was getting it in. Did you and Dan have crazy sex? No, we were too tired. <laughs> we like, we really <laughs> Okay, continue. No. You were at, you were at no. a bar. It, we made it look good. We were like definitely like four playing at the bar. But then when I got home, I was like, don't touch me. I'm going to bed. I'm tired, babe. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I was like, we'll fuck tonight on Monday <laughs> when I get home. 4.30. He's like, all right, hon, I'll be there. I'm ready. Anyway, so <laughs> that is, that's our little you story. Do <laughs> oh, no, we do do us. And it's it, we mostly do each other like before 5 p.m. It's like our favorite time to have sex. Anyway. It's a lot of TMI. Hopefully he's not tuning in. But I got a whole other story about that. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, so I was out this weekend. We got to tell you uh, today, True Food Kitchen, we are doing a giveaway when you share today's Facebook Live. Okay, so if you are listening in the car, um, whether you're listening to us on Spotify, iTunes, wherever, you can always go to my Facebook page, Sarah Fraser, hit pages, and then share today's show. You're going to be entered to win $50 to True Food Kitchen. I know they have a location that I go to in Fairfax, Virginia, uh, which is super sweet, and their food is all organic all natural they have amazing cocktails like from their own like grown herbs and spices it's super delicious so you can have a date night on the hey fresh podcast so be sure to share it um i also have to thank a couple of our sponsors we have a brand new sponsor and this is so up my alley because i talk about this all the time therapy literally saved my life it was so good. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went and saw my mindful eating and living therapist, Robin, because I was I was in so unhappy in my job life. I was like gaining and eating all the time and binge eating. And even before that, I mean, I'd been on a diet. I started my first diet when I was 12 years old. So I had a lot to get through. But Talkspace is awesome. And now they've decided to partner with us here at the Hey Fresh podcast. If you haven't heard of Talkspace, they have sponsored today's show. They're the online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. All you need is a computer with internet connection or the Talkspace mobile app. That means you can improve your mental health even if you've had trouble making time for it in the past. Can't imagine fitting anything else into your life? Well, with Talkspace therapy, it's as easy as sending your therapist a message get something off your chest whenever you need to talk about everyday challenges at work or at home just chat about life there's no extra uh there are no extra commutes no leaving the office and no judgments uh talkspace platforms has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life challenges with all faces uh to match with a perfect therapist or a fraction for the fraction of the price of traditional therapy go to talkspace.com backslash phrase F-R-A-S-E. And use code Frage to get $45 off your first month and show your support for, of course, our show. We love that. You want to know how to support our show? 
buy, call, use our advertisers that partner with us. So that is Talkspace.com backslash Frage and enter my code Frage. So thank you guys for sponsoring the show today. We're super excited. Um, so Andrea was right. I was out all weekend long. And uh, last night I was actually in Baltimore. We have a lot of Baltimore listeners. So I went up to see a speaker called Jordan Peterson. And I'm curious if you're on Facebook right now, have you heard of Jordan Peterson? And, and what do you think about him? Because he is a speaker who... Um, has has gotten some controversy, which I find at first when I started reading the controversy, I was like, oh, this guy's a douche. Like, I'm not going to like this guy. He's Canadian. He's a professor of sociology, not sociology, sociology. He hates that word of psychology. So anyway, and then he wrote this book, 12 Rules for Life that I'd heard of through the grapevine, but I still have not read. And, you know, then people were saying, like, this guy's anti-transgender, like all this stuff. He's anti-women. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to listen to him, but I had a friend, my, our friend Adam, who's who we talk about on the show all day. He's Adam. into this guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Okay. So all day, Adam sends me Joe Rogan's te- podcast, and he says you've got to listen to this guy, Jordan Peterson. He's a philosopher. He's like really deep. So, uh, so Dan and I were like driving back from Detroit, and we put it on, and I was like sucked in. I was mesmerized. Like, and he's amazing. Like he, okay. So last night the whole talk was patriarchy, the patriarchy. And does it really oppress women? Or is that basically a narrative that has been put out and, you know, overplayed to the point that now everyone just takes the highlights and bullet points of the patriarchy holding women down and just regurgitates them? Got it. Which, of course, I feel like I, it totally challenged me last night to go, I regurgitate so much shit that I read and hear in the media. I do. Yeah. I do. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. And he, his whole thing is like stopping you and going, are these narratives true? Like, are these things true? Did the patriarchy system really oppress women? Or was it one side effect of it, but the patriarchy did all these things to help women? And then he talks about birth control and then he talks about uh, the advancement of, you know, making um, the whole delivering a baby like so much safer and how, you know, that whole patriarchy system kind of advanced childbirth and now your kids live longer and all this stuff. And so I'm like, oh, my God, these are just fascinating narratives to me. Well, I like that you look at both sides because you you are a big not I wouldn't say would you consider yourself a feminist? You're a feminist, but not like a hardcore one that's like I hate all men, fuck men. Like you you're fight for women and fight for women's rights. But I like that you're like seeing this other side of it. Yeah, and I, I think that I you know it's funny that you asked me that. If, am I a feminist? I went to an all women's college, which I loved the whole idea and the messaging of you can do anything you want. But the whole thing about whether it's feminism or whatever activists activism you're in is ultimately we have to do it together and that's basically from a scientific from a historical point of view is what he argues and when a system becomes like about one group controlling things you essentially have a tyrannical society and it never works so ultimately what feminism i think is saying to women is like get in there fight you do deserve equal chances and yes i'm with all that but I think this idea that like men need to take a back seat, like white men need to take a back seat and then women need to just shine. I'm like, I don't know. Is that like because basically his argument is if women did that, like if society just said, OK, women are running the country, women are running the show from now on, like we're women, we're going to switch it up and women are going to be in all power that essentially he says exactly various abusive powers that have happened like a great example is Me Too. And like we just were talking about Les Moonves, who's this the CEO of, of CBS stepping down, that that exact thing would happen by women on the and other I'm side. Like, oh, interesting. So it's always about like for him, it's always about a balance. And I'm like, God, that's amazing. It was it's I I think he is super fascinating. And I don't get why there's so much controversy around him. Because essentially, the, the, you, when you Google him, if you don't know him, like a lot of people on here don't don't seem to know him. Evelyn's on. Robin Ficker is on. Yvonne Castro Rodriguez just joined. Marlene is on. But nobody's really saying I was asking you guys if you know who Jordan Peterson is. When you Google him, though, there is a a um, bill that comes up in Canada where essentially it was saying if you do not refer to a trans one of his, one of Jordan Peterson's gripes with this bill in Canada was they were trying to propose that essentially if you call a transgender person like it, it, Let's say, Andrea, you are becoming a man. Right. Okay. And then, but you're still dressing as a woman and you demand to be called he. Like, that's what you want to be referred to. 
Even though I'm still in my transition period. Correct. Okay. Basically, the bill said, if I am, am working with you or talking to you on the street and I don't call you by what you want to be called, then I can be charged with a hate crime. And so Jordan Peterson argues against that. Like, that's just, it's bananas. Like, that. yes, of course, hate crimes when there's, like, violence. But, like, what are words? And there's, like, a whole ideology behind it. Anyway. So if you if you research him, that's what will kind of come up. But I'm I'm like super fascinated by him. I think that people do not like him because he's so smart. And I think there's a simplicity about what he says. And I think also whether you're left or right, I think both sides have gone so bananas with their, you know, their theories and their thoughts and how you have to behave that I think. Jordan Peterson is very threatening to those both opinions. Well, yeah, people don't like to see the other side of stuff. And until they're like awakened right. by awoken, awakened and by this person, they just want to stick with their own. Like I've stuck with this belief. Like my mom is a person like this. She has her opinions and she sticks to them. And the minute somebody tries to challenge her, she gets pissed. And so I see it all the time with her. But I love Joe Rogan and I love his podcast and I, I love know. the people he gets on. So I'll definitely take a listen to that episode. It was the Jordan Peterson episode. Yeah. I mean, he's on for like three hours. I oh, would love he's... to know what you I, I, I so <laughs> desperately want him to be on this podcast. Like it would be so good. But I don't know. He's only doing like selective interviews. And I think he's getting to the point where he refuses to come on if you edit the interviews, because I think he has been so um, oh, his yeah. words have been taken and miscued and then edited and sliced and diced so much that that they, you know, that there's various narratives that are created. And so he, I think he'll only come on, which I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Well, we're know. live. Yeah, so there's please. like, there's no editing. We don't do any edit. We're lazy as fuck. <laughs> After this goes off, like we're not, no, we're not editing shit. Like here it is. This is I, what I, you get. Think, I think men and women would love him. I really do. I just, I really am obsessed. So anyway, I was there up in Baltimore seeing him last night. It was so great. Didn't get home till 11, which is like unheard of. When's the last time you've been up since 11? I mean, it's, I got to go way back. So it's back a in the time. day. Back in the day. I mean, way back. Way Proud back. of you. Proud of you. Proud oh, of you. I was up and out. It was amazing. Amazing. So that was my weekend. But Andrea, I wanted to hear what was going on with you. I know you and Iggy had like a... a, a, a what happened? Something about like you were house sitting or supposed to be babysitting his birds? Well, <laughs> what? First when of you, all, when it, you say that, it sounds so bad. My boyfriend has two birds. They're cockatiels. I don't... I've never had a bird. I've never held a bird in my life before, Iggy. <laughs> And he was away this weekend um, on drill because he's in the National Guard. And um, so he he told me to like make sure the birds are okay. And I was like, okay. So I didn't go over because I was so busy. We had work and I'm like watching my, my grandmother. Like too much was going on. So I never went over there to watch the fucking birds. And so he comes back last night and he's like, and I went over there just to like make sure I, like the house didn't like die down before. Like well, it was it was up to me to like watch his apartment. Anyway, long story short, the... Um, Nothing. I didn't. I didn't do anything. The birds were starving. They were frozen. <laughs> they were what? almost. They were almost dying. Yeah, because really? I didn't. I didn't what? refill their food or water, and I didn't know it was like such a serious thing. I thought it's these birds live forever. So yeah, I get there. He's like, really nice to see you didn't feed my birds, and they're they're freezing because they're shivering, <laughs> and the dishes aren't done. And I thought you were gonna do my laundry. I was like, what is this? A service? Like, you go away for the weekend, and I'm supposed to clean your whole apartment? Guys, we do not live together, and um, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But was there, okay, there was obviously an expectation that you were going to take care of the birds, which right. didn't happen. Right, But did he say to you before that you went, hey, do you mind doing my dishes and making my bed? Hell no. Like, I he mean, really as asked a, you that? As a nice gesture, in the past, I've gone over and watched the birds, and then I've made his bed and done the dishes as a nice thing. Guess what, girls? Don't fucking do anything, because then they expect it the rest of the time. The next time they go away, they expect the same exact service. And I was like, I, sorry I didn't get to your dishes this weekend. Like, what? I was pissed. I was like, I can't even believe that you asked me to do your dishes. He's like, yeah, and I'm surprised there's not really dinner here. What? Yeah. I was okay, like, okay, never mind. You know, I take back everything I said about Jordan Peterson. That patriarchy <laughs> sucks. Like, all these, look at these men. Fuck them. He's like, what? I was working all weekend. I was like, he so really was did. I. He seems so like, because Andrea's boyfriend is how old? 25. He's super hot. He's like super tall. He's like d- I'm tall, dark, to him, and handsome. But, but, you know. Italian looking. I mean, the only negative are two things. I mean, the birds. And then he also like paints all these figurines. I mean, those are two <laughs> things like we're always like, uh, yeah. should we ignore this? Should we ignore this? Like, but everything else about him, he's like super cute. He's like sweet. You think so. But no. He's but got no. like super top clearance or whatever Anyways. now with the Pentagon. He's yeah. like handling all the. But, but I just want to know if anybody else experiences this. Like if 
like, do you do a lot for your significant other? And then in the future, do they expect that same amount of work in the relationship? Oh, I don't know. That's do I have really to make your question. bed? Like, we don't live together. Sarah, you live with Dan. So who does the dishes in the relationship? Well, now it's all divided. Like, I would say I make the bed every day. Dan does the dishes for the most part. I do the majority of the cooking. He puts the laundry in. I fold. Like, it's all like 50-50. I think. That's great. That's what it's supposed to yeah. be. I agree. I agree. I can't believe Maggie would say that. I'm actually, I know. I'm really surprised. I just didn't think he was like at all. I mean, I could see like if you'd said that you were going to do the birds right, and, and then, then I didn't, didn't do the birds. I mean, I would have just put a thing, a big thing of food out in the water and then like, good luck to him. I didn't even get out there. I didn't even go. I didn't even drive out to his apartment. I was like, Fuck. and what do you have to do with the birds? Like, do they have to like have a sheet over them at night? Like that's the only no. way they'll sleep? Not really, actually. They're pretty oh. easy. Literally, all I had to do was refill the water and the food, and I didn't even do that. So, <laughs> sorry. And they, they were frozen because it was cold this weekend. Now it's fall. I don't <laughs> Did know. Did you leave the window open? Like, what? why would they freeze it? His apartment is super sensitive. So, like, if it's cold outside, the whole entire apartment, it's horrible circulation. It, it, really? I, I think the apartment is literally made of paper paper walls. I don't... Oh, my it's, God. It's a cheap apartment. <laughs> well, thank God the cockatoo... What are they? What kind of birds? They're cockatiels, and so cockatiels. they're like I this look big, up that. and they have, I mean, they're really cute. They eat from your mouth, which is kind of gross. Okay, no. <laughs> Who, I, I can't even believe that. Who is like eating, like, people are always letting their pets lick and eat their mouth. And then like every couple of months, we see these people that lose all their limbs because they let their dog suck okay, on their that, penis or that some shit. Like, what? No, it doesn't. It happens all the time. That happened, I just heard about that story. That happened one time, Sarah. No, one time. it happens all, I swear to God, Google it. Over the years, like all these, or, or like, I, I don't even get me started because you guys know how I feel about animals. And then I get tons of hate mail. Like, it's because of people like you that people continue to turn their animals out because you talk crap about animals. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't. I think it's great that you love your pet. I think it's wonderful that you advocate for animal rights. I never want to see an animal abused. But the way people treat their pets now is just gotten out of control. Well, well, you don't really like pets. You've you've grown up with pets, but you've never had one yourself. No, I do. I love pets. They're supposed to live outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that's where they okay. want to live. I actually asked Dan this the other day. I said, "Do people have dog houses anymore? Like, do do, do dog houses exist?" He's like, "No." I think maybe out in the Midwest, probably when it's like neutral weather in the freezing cold, you can't leave your dog. Okay, if it's a husky. How do you know? I mean, to me, like, doesn't a dog want to live in a dog house? I don't think they necessarily want to live inside. Which oh, my is why dog, now they get diabetes. My dog sleeps on my pillow every night. She has her spot. She wants me to rub her at night before she goes to bed. I give her warm wow. milk. Okay, okay. No, <laughs> this, these dogs do not want that. Anyway, do, look, we got to talk pop culture. We have so many stories that we got to cover, okay? Uh, we were talking on the show, uh, the big news over there. There was two big news. Mac Miller, the singer, uh, died of a drug overdose, which was absolutely tragic. Just 26 years old, very talented. You probably know some of his songs. I really knew the one. He did a collaboration um, with uh, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. The song's called The Way. So you probably would know that one. That was the one that, that I knew that was the most popular. But I think the saddest part about this story is Ariana Grande. Day getting like so many people saying that basically he overdosed because of her. They'd broken up like six months ago. Right. That she had to turn off the comments on her Instagram page after she put up a picture of him. But you kind of, AJ, you felt differently. You feel like she just shouldn't even address it, right? I think it's such a personal thing when somebody that you know goes through this. And I don't know if it's better to bring awareness to it or kind of just keep to yourself. I think that she posted a picture, didn't have any caption. The comments were disabled. And I think that she should. it's such a personal issue. Just don't even post about him. Like, do you have to show to the masses that you care about this person? And like, is your social media so personal that you share stuff like that? You know what I mean? Like a lot of people showed a lot of respect to Mac Miller. Friends of his. Right. um, John Mayer had a beautiful post about him. Oh, really? I didn't even read that one. Okay. And he said he. He wasn't even super close with him, but the moments he did share with Mac Miller were amazing. They did this one collab together and he like John Mayer was praising him. And I love posts like that. But for Ariana Grande, you know, she was dating him. They were such an, they were in a serious relationship. And I just don't know. I don't, I don't like how she posted a picture and turned off all her comments and was like, I just, people were like accusing her of yes. essentially leading to his death. I'm like, yes. do people know how deep addiction is? Like exactly. Addiction. And there's so even, many things that trigger addiction. Right. Right. It, it, for her to put blame. She they were dating for two years and one of the main reasons they broke up is because of his drug problem so obviously she tried to help him she stayed with him as long as possible probably and it's not really her fault but who i mean who's to judge they say that um he just dropped an album and travis scott dropped an album and they were talking all this shit between each other like travis oh, really? was so much better and like mac miller nobody even knew mac miller released an album and so that's the real reason like the underlying reason why he was pissed like the, his supposed girl he was dating came out and did a whole like like showed showed text messages before his death that between he and travis scott 
No, between her, him and her. Okay. And like explaining the Travis Scott thing. And he was like telling this girl um, right before he overdosed. He like had like, you deserve everything. You deserve the world. Like, I just need to deal with my own stuff. And I should have brought the text messages up. But very sad. Yeah. So I really don't think it had anything to do with Ariana. I mean, it probably was a contributing factor. Sure, I'm sure there were so many things, so yeah. many things. And, you know, ultimately, as anybody who who knows this listening and I always disclose my brother's been seven years sober. I actually think it's this month, which is amazing. But addiction is one of the hardest things to deal with. And you just it's a constant it's constantly there for people. So it's, you know, I mean, it's working on your sobriety and and having that and and you have to want it. You have to have hit your rock bottom to want it. Is this is this one of the songs that this is one of my my favorite songs? Knock, knock. I don't know if anybody knows. I mean, I'm sure. But Anyway, super, super sad. Everybody, please. Yeah. A lot of people were affected by it. I mean, I heard so many people like so oh, yeah, surprised. tons of people. Well, we were talking that that was the big news until Cardi B and Nicki Minaj had a fight at Fashion Week, which to be honest, I don't really like. Do you guys watch and care? I don't care. The only thing that I read about this is that Nicki Minaj, for many people, Remy Ma, other rappers, other people in the business, apparently works against other female personalities to try to shut them down. Like, actively tries to get them off red carpet so they can't get exposure. Like, actively tries to derail their their sales. And to me, it just sounds like Nicki Minaj is a bully. It sounds like she's becoming a bully. She is a bully. She kept antagonizing Cardi B. And then I just loved all the videos where people were like, oh, no, you're kidding. Like, a stripper got in a fight? No. (laughs) I'm like, yes, I love that. But no, Nicki Minaj just sounds like an awful person, which sucks because I used to love her music. But I don't care anything. I couldn't even tell you what album that the newest album that she has out. I mean, I think it was Queen or something. It was trending for like one day. Who gives a shit? It's like Kanye West releasing like Throne 2. No one cares. No one ca- no does anyone buy albums anymore? No, they don't. <laughs> That's why I think they have to create all this drama all the time. I think they have to pretend there are all these feuds and like you know, I think that's why people hate on Eminem so much. It's like, yeah, Eminem got in when people still bought albums. Now, like, nobody who's buying your album. I go to YouTube and I listen like this. <laughs> Justin <laughs> Bieber. Justin Bieber. This was like a Nicki Minaj beauty. beauty the I used to love this song. This is when she was nice. Now she's like a huge know, bitch because no one's like I buying mean, her stuff. To be honest, I've never heard good things about her, so I don't even... I just, I think, I think that they, uh, what sucks is like... A, yeah. Oh my God, I love him so much. <laughs> First Just, of all, I love all the pop music. Like, bring back the pop music. I know. Didn't you miss that? Yes. I miss the old fun pop like, music. All of it now, they're all trying to do these hardcore rap disses. Who cares? I don't care. Like, Beauty and the Beat, all I need is Beauty and a Beat. <laughs> it's all I, I need, need, literally. Beauty and a Beat. Yes. I need to be in this pool with Justin Bieber. I don't give a crap that he's fake, you know, feuding with Travis Scott. Who cares? Yeah, no. All right, Jay Biebs or uh, Zach Efron? Oh, my God, Zach Efron. Zach, Zach Efron's, like, way more of a man. Do you think so? Oh, hell yeah. Zach Efron's, like, way hotter than Justin Bieber. I met Justin, I met Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber came to the radio station before when his little viral video, this would have been, like, 10 years ago, had He's, just gone viral. He was 14 years old with a comb over. Oh, Tons of acne on his face. The comb over. I wanted to get him proactive right there on the show. <laughs> he had so much acne. I was like, this kid isn't going to be shit. Right, and then, Jeff- like, two months, two years later, he was, like, the biggest star ever. I'm like, I have the worst prediction. So what do I know? See about the music industry. To me, I just feel like I'm so glad that I am not in the singing world because I feel like now you got to tattoo your face you constantly have to do diss tracks and like you have to be like having sex with as many people as possible it's so exhausting nothing seems worse to me than trying to be a pop singer no but all you want to do is have sex so I feel like you would just be perfect okay yeah you're right I've got that down but then they have to tattoo their whole bodies like everyone you need all these tears all over your eyes yeah that's a lot I mean oh my god it's so much right the drama to keep it going it must be exhausting. I always think they I must, agree. They, I just feel like they must be so exhausted. Look, I'm exhausted just watching it and following it. Oh, Jay Biebs, back in his day, back and in his prime. I, that's just, I, I would be curious to see if people care, but I'm like, I don't care about Nicki Minaj. Like, I'm sure she's, I don't know why she is like b- behind the scenes a bully, but I'm not surprised. <laughs>
I'm not. Like, I, mean, I feel like that's a thing. Is like, like watching this whole Serena Williams. Like, I'm so into this. Like, what people think about Serena and that match that she had at the U.S. I feel, Open. I feel like that has more clout. Like, you can talk about that and actually have a real opinion about that than Nicki Minaj and her fight. So, what's your opinion, by the way? And Naomi Osaka is uh, her win now is being said that you know it was overshadowed by all the drama that's happened with Serena Williams. I'm sure you've seen this. I mean, again, I always say to people like, if you're blessed enough not to have the internet, like God bless you. But right, right. For anyone that has an internet, they already know this. So. Serena was at the U.S. Open. She had a a, uh, tennis referee who essentially was penalizing her for she was, you know, showing her frustration, threw a racket down at some point, which is all stuff that men do. I have to say, I don't really watch a lot of tennis, but I follow Serena Williams. And uh, but this has become this whole thing. Well, wasn't it with the hands up, the, the thumbs up to her to her coach? Oh, yeah, yeah. It started with Serena allegedly getting coaching from the side, which her coach said that he was coaching her. But apparently, and again, anybody watching or listening that knows tennis, apparently that happens all the time in tennis. So it's nothing like uh, Rafael Nadal. Like all these people are getting coaching while they're, which seems to me like fine. Isn't that what the NFL does? You want, They're always coaching from the sidelines. Well, they, they, they have earpieces. I agree. They're coaching during the game. So that's kind of how it all started. She's now been fined $17,000. But it sparked this whole debate of, you know, and the words that the media have used is that she was hysterical, that she was a bad sport. It overshadowed Naomi's win. What did you, when you kind of watched the video and everything, what did you think? I mean, I thought she was totally in the right mind to go up because, I mean, I think the umpire gave her a hard time. So it was, she had the right to go up and be like, yo, I'm not getting, you know, my. I would rather lose than, I thought that was really powerful being like, I wouldn't cheat. I'd rather lose. Like, I loved that. And I think she congratulated. I can't pronounce her name. What is it? Oh, Naomi Osaka. Osaka. She like went up to her and like gave her a whole thing. And she was very polite about losing. Well, that's because they they were booing Osaka, basically, while she was getting her award. Like she wins the U.S. Open, but then everyone's booing. They're booing the ref. They're booing that Serena didn't win. Uh, By the way, people are on the Facebook Live. Uh, Bernie, I'd be curious. Bernie says, I've worked one of her shows and she's not nice. Now, are you referring to Nicki Minaj or are you referring to Serena Williams? Like, I want to know. Definitely Nicki. Do you think it's Nicki Minaj that he's I referring so. to? Yeah. Bernie, you got to write in. We want to know who it is. Uh, Christina says it does overshadow Naomi's win, but she has legit reasons for being mad. Agreed. Um, you know, my thought on this is like, look, I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I've worked in the radio business a long time, and I do think that men, are, there is a an acceptance that men are allowed to be passionate. They're allowed to yell, to scream. I've worked in an environment like that for many years where the, some of the male jocks were allowed to yell, scream, throw keys, kick trash cans. And everybody, it was like, well, the he, minute he's just very woman. passionate about his job. And I'm like, nobody else in this <laughs> fucking building could get away behaving like this without being ra- like, I mean, I actually think this person is now like, a, I think everyone knows that he has issues, but I mean, I'm like, it's such a double standard. So I, John McEnroe for you. I mean, I think John McEnroe has a commercial about him losing it. Like, how is that? I to me, I don't know. Maybe I don't know the inside game as much because a lot of people have very passionate feelings on this. They feel like she is disrespectful, that she's been disrespectful many times before that she, you know, I don't know. But to me, I feel like there is such a double standard. I'm obsessed with Billie Jean King. I would leave Dan for Billie Jean King. She's like 75-year-old <laughs> hot lesbian. I'm all about her. And she says the same thing. Oh, uh, Bernie says that he worked with Nicki Minaj. I believe <gasps> that. I believe that Nicki Minaj is not a nice person. I, now I've, I've read so many thought- stories. You yeah. really, you've always thought that about her? Oh, yeah. She, I mean, one, she looks crazy. Nicki does, you think? Yes. What? Nicki, Nicki is like a clown to me. Like, I think, I, I mean, that's, 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 her whole, that's her whole costume. Yeah, it's like. The Botox has gotten tight, but her I mean, I can ass, relate. Sarah, her ass is not. It's too. But no one's ass dodge is real ball now. Balloons, dodgeball. I meant dodgeball. Kickball, like the massive kickball ones. Really, uh, Bernie goes on to say <laughs> she was a big baby, wasted a lot of food, treated her people like crap, and I had to do security on her dressing room. <gasps> really? Oh wasted my god, this a lot is awesome. Oh, I love this inside dirt. I love all the dirt. I love all the dirt. Well, I don't know. But you no know, no one, no one thinks she's nice. Like I've never thought that. Well, I think it's great that Serena is standing up for herself. I thought it was great. I think that that ref did have it out for her. I think that there is 100% a feeling of, in not just sports world, but in work environments, I'm sure many of you listening have worked for, and I've I've worked for difficult female bosses too, so I can't say it's just men. But I think um, once you're in a level of authority, I, I think whether you're male or female, I do think there's a level of they, you can behave like shit and everyone's like, oh, they're just really passionate about their job. Mm-hmm. Like to me, I'm always curious. Like, when is the next Me Too going to be about like the the 
uh, vo- like verbal abuse at the workplace. Like, when's that going to be the next revolution? When's Instead it, of like, like sexual abuse. Yes. More like verbal. Yeah. Yes. Like I feel the like tyrants that people work for. I- I've yes. been there. Like, how is that not a movement? Because that affects both men and women. You're right. And I know, like, people in the lower, when you're, like, an intern, I'm, like, I feel like that would extend to so many people. Like, yeah, seriously, when is that movement, movement happening? Because... That's why I always say, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I, so many men a, a, in radio, and they're allowed to, like, t- destroy the radio station, their, their station that they're in. They can throw phones. I mean, for years, many, many radio jocks have had this legendary temper thing. And I'm like, it's so unacceptable. I will never ever have a show i'll never have people work for me where i'm yelling and screaming at them i don't give a shit and, and then they come back and they're apologetic like i'm sorry i shouldn't have yelled at you i shouldn't have no fuck you like keep your temper under control like, and actually and to serena's the only thing that i would say is like i do think serena had a really good point and I, I loved that when she brought the refs out and she said look this would never happen i think she had a great point then i think once you start crying and everything the message is a little lost i think but but this i liked what she was saying yeah but this is not um for for how much um, success she's had, I don't think she's a diva at all. Like in the past, we haven't seen this this type of behavior. Well, that's not exactly true. In two thousand and nine, I think she told a ref that she would shove the uh, the tennis ball so far down his throat he wouldn't be able to breathe. So I, I do right, think that's she's a little extreme. That's she, a little extreme. But I mean, but they all do. They all do. So what I'm saying is universally, I don't care if you're John McEnroe or Serena Williams. You know, behave better. And I know you're lost in the moment. And look, you're dehydrated. You're sweating. There's a lot on the line. Not only. I think the biggest part about celebrities is then you begin to you're supporting your parents, you're supporting your friends, you've got kids, you know, there's a there's a lot at stake. But, uh, you know, it drove me crazy to see all the men on social media like, oh, she shouldn't behave like that. Really? How about let's let's talk about who in your office abuses people, because I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably more men. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm Joe's just, over. Hi. No. Hi. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> People are saying I should start this movement. Uh, did you ladies see the cartoon that they made of Serena? No, send it to us. We always love memes. Uh, Lissa says this is real talk. Uh, Stephanie says it's an intersexual double standard. I mean, I agree. I do agree with you. I do agree. I think that there, for years, whether it's Rafael Nadal, whether it's John McEnroe, I think that these men get allowed to absolutely have complete over the top dramatic actions that are violent and outbursts and they are completely rewarded for it like oh he's just passionate about his job fuck you tom brady's the same way and tom brady at times it's like it's like so over the top you'd be passionate about your job but at the end of the day get over it. it's like other people you love tom brady i do love tom brady I did, and they won that yesterday. But, and like Gronk, I just like love it. I, I love, love. I do love Gronk. He's so goofy. He's he's actually. I see you marrying like Gronk. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, that's like my type just of guy. this complete like <laughs> knucklehead that has like zero brain cells, but he's like massive and muscly and full bro. And then you guys just drink vodka shots off each other. I could totally see you with Gronk. You're that's like what I, that's, you're like that hot too. I think. No, I, although everyone no, no, tells no. me I'm not supposed to say that about you, but that's what I thought Iggy was. And then he turns out to be this like intellectual freak. And I'm like, oh, I hope his family doesn't listen to this podcast it would be a disaster i know we gotta talk we don't even have time because i want to hit some more stories but we do have to i'm getting to the point where i think we have to put out a fake podcast (laughs) i really am because my my mother my future mother-in-law wants to listen your family wants to listen iggy's parents we like we actively have to put something out that's severely pg and we start with a prayer but like, oh, yes. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, my definitely parents. do that. The only problem is we, we, we work so much, they're going to wonder why there's only one episode. So we got to at least do three. I should. All right, yeah, <laughs> okay, we'll do that. We're going to work on that with listeners. Um, okay, I wanted to get a couple of these stories, too. And then we've got to thank our sponsors. we got to get to Pineapple Mail. So a 104-year-old Japanese doctor is recommending these healthy pieces of advice if you want to live longer. And I was, I really love this list. I can't wait to hear them. It's from thehealthylifestyle.com. Uh, oh, my God. I think it's. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't. Mr. I'm going to say Mr. Hanora. OK, I'll just go with that. Dr. Hanora. I can't say his first name is 104 years old from Japan. He's written several best selling books, uh, Live Long, Living Good and also New Elderly Movement. OK, but he says, here are some of the top things if you want to live longer. He says, number one, always carry your own stuff and stay, take the stairs. Dr. Hanora still takes two steps at a time while climbing the stairs. And he says, you should always carry your own groceries, your own luggage, your own bags. I love that. I do love that. Yeah, he says it's really good for balance. You always take the stairs. I always take the stairs. I don't I, I don't really work out. Oh my god, I didn't even get to it. I'm not gonna do you know, I'll have to talk about it later. Because I did take a oh. Zango class. It was a it was the worst nightmare of my life. Wait a minute. Okay, if we don't have time, do we do we have time? What, to do the Zango class? I yes, don't I no, I don't even think we're gonna have time. Right, you guys, it is on so, Wednesday. Oh my god, I can't 
I had never been to, to. Do you actually pay people pay to go to these cycling classes? It was bananas. It's like yes. in a nightclub where they abuse you on a bicycle. It's I the worst thing ever. The idea is you're not even supposed to know that you're working out. They're supposed to like trick you into thinking like this like, pumped Who up music. Oh my God. Are you <laughs> oh, kidding? Did you know you were working out during that? My vagina and butthole still hurt from riding that bike. It was the most uncomfortable thing ever. And then there's like this trigger that they call it, which ups the gauge of it yes. makes the resistance more. And the entire time they trigger shave you, they're like, all right, right now, turn it all the way to the right, all the way. Only you know. Only you know within yourself. Are you going all in? Because at the end of the day, you're going to walk out of here. and You've got to check yourself. And have you left it all on the floor? All on the floor? My fucking trigger was all the way to the left the entire time. <laughs> and she's like, turn it all the way to the left. I'm like, it can't go any more left for the cool down. I was like, it's been left the entire time. Was it a good workout? No, it okay. was hell. <laughs> it was hell. I couldn't wait to get off. And people cycle so hard. I swear to God, I think that the underlying like cult phenomenon there is they're trying to break the bicycle or something. They're just going to fly off the bicycle. Oh my God. These people all seem to me like they snorted Adderall. They got on these bikes and then they like cracked themselves out for an hour. I was like, oh my God. I was going so slow. And then every time she'd be like, right now, you dig in yourself right now. Are you, are you all the way to the left on your trigger? Are you all the way to the right? I'd be like, I'm all the way ready to get off this. Like, how do I get off? How do I get out of here? But of course, they put me right near the fucking stage. It was the they worst. They did? Oh, no. Then she stares at you. The instructor stares at you the during whole the whole time. time. She's Damn. on her headset. You got to go in the back. You got to get a last a last row seat. And the minute like I tried to, like when they w- the lights went down, I was going to try to like kick my heels off of the pedals oh, so yeah, I could yeah. just relax. But they can't. They like, strap you into the bike. <laughs> it's like, yeah. even if you wanted to leave, like you can't. You have to like piss and shit yourself on oh, the bike my. because you can't stop. It is that intense, folks. I don't know how people do it, honest to God. I was like, I can't even, I don't know. Um, But look, so, okay, here are some of the other things that Dr. Uh, Norris says. He says, don't believe everything recommended by a specialist or your doctor. Educate yourself. Read more. No one forces you to believe your doctor. And he says, get second opinions. Share what you know with others. He still gives 150 lectures a year. He says that you should share your knowledge. No one says that you have to retire. Do not retire if you love what you do. Plan ahead. If you don't want your life to be boring, you must have a busy schedule filled with lectures and appointments. Oh, no. That sounds exhausting. (laughs) I agree. Don't be overweight. He says your level of energy doesn't come from eating well or resting longer. It comes only from feeling good. You'll be happier and more energized if you get rid of your rules and your mind. Act like a child. Think like a child. Have fun until you feel hungry or sleepy. (gasps) I'm going to adopt that. I'm going to start acting like a kid. I I feel like we do. I feel like our job is so fun that we do act like kids. Also, kids retire. Like kids are not working. This, this this, this, This goes against everything. But no, we should have fun at work. See, but we have fun at work. We here, do. Right? I don't do. verbally abuse you. You don't. And we have a great time. Sometimes you, um, what's the word? Uh, the- no, I, I, f- I refuse to get upset when there are tif- technical difficulties. And many people here at Podcast Village have gone, hey, it's really, it's amazing that you don't have a meltdown. No, it should <laughs> piss you off that these radio guys still have meltdowns about a fucking microphone. It's true. You are it really nice. It shouldn't be a badge of honor where people come up to me and they're like, wow, I can't believe, you know, the internet didn't work today and you didn't lose it. No, that. That's how messed up our workplaces are. In radio, it's so bad. Or just TV in general. I they think just it's have, every, I, honestly, I think it's banking. I think it's, I think it's every environment. I think you have these people who come in and think they're like work warriors where they're just going to like get a little bit of power and then they're going to hold it over you like about the copier. At the end, it's a copier. Like who cares? I got to say, I feel very safe at work. Okay, good. That's what I want. I seriously want that. I honestly do. I never want to yell at like any. I just think it's so crazy. Like, I mean, okay, fine. If you like, I don't know, secretly tape me and then sell it. I don't even know that I'd be mad about that. I'd be like, count, like, like work me in on the deal. Like if you want to post me nude. Okay. Uh, anyway, look, <laughs> <laughs> the healthy lifestyle. This guy has so many great pieces of advice. I love it so much. So go and check out that article. Also, um, I, I don't even think we have time to get into this uh, about are guys even trying on dates anymore? Oh, I love this. I love this story. So are men even trying on dates? Uh, a woman wrote an article. Lane Moore is her name for Self Magazine. She says that it's getting worse than ever and it's not just Tinder. She says, what's up with men? You say that you're going to go out on a date. Then they go, OK, fine. Friday night, it's it. But they don't text you until 7 o'clock about details for where the date is going to be. And they want you to be there at 8. I mean, this is just typical guys. Like, what do we really expect from them? And the reason why they don't try oh on God. dates anymore is because... getting sexist on this show? No, the reason why... No, no, no. I'm, gonna, I'm actually defending the men at this point. Okay. It's because women give it up too easily. And then guys are like, oh, fuck it. I don't have to try anymore. Like, they're just going to fuck me anyways tonight. Like, that, that works. Save 
the puss for later, guys. You think? Yes. Okay, if that's why men don't try on first dates anymore, because you just give it up on the first date. And they just go on Tinder and they set up like five dates and they know they're going to get asked that night and they don't try anymore. Uh, women say this woman basically says that other friends that she's talked to and in her experience, she says that men are trying less than ever now. She says she recently spent seven hours talking to a guy on their first date. They kissed and it was great. Immediately intimate and lovely. And then he didn't walk her home even two blocks away. So essentially they were at a restaurant where like they were meeting up. She lives two blocks away and he didn't walk her home. And when I asked him what was up a few days later, he never texted. He says, quote, got busy and forgot. Sorry. Then kept texting me like nothing was wrong. Oh, well. And then ghosted again. What? Okay, this guy's a douche. Drop him immediately. Also, I always say this, though. Men don't, like, pull out chairs anymore. They don't walk you home anymore. They don't really? hold the umbrella. I feel like that. I feel, I do feel like that. Is that really true? Does Dan pull the chair out for you? Um, well, we don't, I mean, it's hard when we're at home. Like, you can't really pull out a sofa. <laughs> like, like, yeah, you mean. Okay, when you go out, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes, but usually, like, the restaurant person does. No, I mean, I don't think, like... <sighs> Does he open the car door for you? Because I know Iggy doesn't do that. No, I don't. That, see? No. But see, my thing is, like, Dan supports me in so many other ways. Like, supports okay. my career. Okay. Like, I'll always, like, whenever I'm having a down day, I'm like, I don't know, you know, like, is this the right path? He's like, you you have to stay on this path. You can never go back to, like, the old situations that you were in. Like, why think, would you ever do that? You'd be so miserable. Like, I, I, he just is very encouraging in many ways. Okay, that's great. That is really important. Which I find super much more romantic than, you know, opening a car door or whatever. I'm a woman, God damn it. I, I can, can open, open my, my own, own door. Damn door. That's right. Zac Efron and Mel B. Um, you know Mel B, of course, as a former Spice Girl, allegedly hooked up after they met on a high-end dating site. What? Okay. The this fact a couple of that the these two are hooking up blows my mind. We're all about Zac Efron. But like what? Okay, so I didn't even know that she was a cougar and he hooks up with older women. Yeah, she's 43. He's 30 years old. The high school musical star they met in Los Angeles and had a hot fling, apparently. Uh, this was right after she had uh, was separated and getting divorced from Stephen Belafonte, who was her soon-to-be ex-husband. What a hot couple. Apparently, Mel B was not particularly into him, but she thought he was a heartthrob. They met on a high-end dating site, so she tried it. What? I mean, what even what what secret exclusive dating app is this? Is this like all know. the celebrities are on it? I guess it doesn't say in the article, but it says the duo met through a super exclusive dating app, swapped flirty messages. And a friend said, quote, he ended up driving over to her pad. They hit it off and spent a few enjoyable hours together. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? You know, no, I can't. I like, like I'd be like crabbing my pants if Zac Efron were on the way to my place. I'd be like, oh, my God. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, I'm gonna have I to wouldn't really even put my A game on. <laughs> Like, I'd, I'd be so thinking about like, oh God, what moves? What moves? I would just turn all the lights off and say, we're going to, I know we're not going to look at each other because I can't even I think did, about oh what I look God, like. Oh God, my underwear doesn't match my bra. Should I like, is that too much effort now? If I go and like get a matching set, do I, can I even find a matching set? Oh I would my God. say that I'm using protection, stick a needle through it, immediately have his baby and then, you know, child support so for life. Hot. See, I think that's why he's probably sleeping with older women. Can't get him as pregnant. It's true. Cause yeah. they, their eggs are so old. Mm-hmm. Everything's done though. That's like me. I you've got to, you, yeah. You've got to get them when they're out of menopause, and then for sure, no babies. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay, no, you don't have you. You, you haven't had menopause yet, right? I uh, know, but I feel like probably getting close. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, look, we have to thank a couple of other uh, sponsors. And Mark Livingstone is actually here because you guys have been amazing. I put up on my Instagram. You can follow me at HeyFrage. Dan and I did. I was talking about this last show that we went out to Leesburg. We've been looking at homes. It's like so unrealistically expensive. So I wanted to get Mark Livingstone, who he owns Cornerstone First Financial. So he's going to answer some questions. But I also wanted to thank a couple of our other sponsors, including um, Fairfax Fashion Show. So this Saturday... You need to come out to Fairfax at Fairfax Corner. I'm going to be hosting their annual um, Fairfax Corner Fall Fashion Show. It is happening from 3 to 5 p.m. Definitely, definitely come see me. It's right there where Coastal Flats is at Fairfax Corner. It's that great town center space. And you can also purchase a VIP ticket, which is only $10. You're going to want that because you get great swag bag. You get priority seating. And they feature everything all age groups South Moon Under usually is in the fashion show. They do the loft. Um, 
So it's terrific. And they really highlight women of all shapes and sizes, which I'm super a proponent of. So there's not like your typical fashion show where everyone has to be like a size double zero. No, we're not about that. Uh, if you want more details, you can go to fairfaxcorner.com. Um, and you can also from their events page, which is right there, you'll see it. You can click on their uh, fa- uh, Fashion Nova 2018, September 15th. Boom, 3 to 5 p.m. You can buy your VIP ticket or it's totally free and just come and hang out with me. So you can see me then. Also on Friday, I'm hosting Social Media Week in Fairfax. <laughs> it's a big week. I mean, it's just, you know, okay, say I'm in demand. I mean, I just want to know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Social Media Week Fairfax is happening this Friday starting at 8 a.m. Tickets are anywhere from $20 to $50, depending on the level you want, because they have VIP. They have regular seating. They have all kinds of crazy seating. Um, and starts at 8 a.m. I will be there. And Social Media Week is one of the world's premier conferences and industry news platforms prof- for professionals in media, marketing, and technology. The mission is to give professionals at the intersection of media, marketing, and technology the insight the trends, the ideas and opportunities. It's pretty cool. So you're going to absolutely want to be there. Their keynote conversation is partnerships with purpose, um, which is how National Geographic became the number one brand on social media. They did. Did anyone know that? Uh, no. God, I didn't. I thought it was TMZ. So there you go. There's a big like awakening for me. Uh, our other sponsor, who we love, is Mark Livingstone, who's here on the podcast. Great Mark, to see you. great to be here. Well, Thank it's you. great to see you too. Except for I'm depressed because I don't know that I'll ever be able to afford a home. I always tell people now I'm looking at single wide trailers. Keep the wheels on in case I can't make the payment out in Percival. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you in something. I promise. <laughs> oh, in something. Great. Look, I have so many questions, and people love when I put you on social media, by the way. They always think you're Dan. Okay. Do, do you think that Dan and I look alike? Yes, I do. And I always tell people it's interesting because you and I have been out on a date. We have. Hey, what's your, by the way, did you hear our segment that chivalry apparently is dead? This woman wrote this Self Magazine article. She says that men put in less effort than ever on dates. I, I didn't hear is okay, it on well, this episode? Yeah, we were talking about this. Yet. Well, basically the premise is this. She says that men like text last minute. They like they ghost you. They don't really text or call after. Like, do you think that you're, you're a guy? Like, what do you find? Do you think women are just as guilty? It depends. If a woman puts out very early on then that's going to take a lot away because oh. then it's you're going to you're going to concentrate on getting it again and again and what the experience was like so my advice to women that are going out on dates is don't put out for some time so you can concentrate on other things like getting to know each other uh, maybe go, going paddle boarding or doing something fun other than that that's what i said uh, and then that was aj's advice yeah. don't put it out sister go. don't put it out yes that's right. that's so right. that's just my experience Okay, well, there okay. you go. All right, well, look, here's my question to you. Sure. Two things I wanted to know. So we went out and looked at a $650,000 home in Leesburg, okay. which seems grossly overpriced That's to me. That's a big house. <laughs> it's a massive yeah, house. 3,000 square feet? Yeah, something like that. Okay, got it. And so, but my thing is this. If, hypothetically, we could afford to buy this house, okay, mm-hmm. and we put 30% down, which was which would, would essentially be 130000 20% down. 20% down. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. hundred and thirty grand. Yep. What do you think our return on investment on a home like that would be? Well, the ge- general rule of thumb is that a house doubles in a, in value every 15 years. Okay. Okay, so in 15 years, whatever you pay for it now, 650000 is going to be worth $1.3 million in 15 years. You think? Thank yeah. God that is amazing you, for Leesburg. If you look back, historically speaking, that has happened every 15 years. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Even with the recessions, even with appreciation, it all balances out that every 15 years a house will double. And I'll also tell you, we're having a great return with the Hey Frage listeners right now. Yes. We, I love your listeners. They're wonderful. We are getting tons of response. We do have the best listeners. They are, they are super cool. Uh, and so we've had a bunch of response of people really just doing some fact finding, trying yep. to figure out if and when they qualify, what they need to do to get their credit in order. Do they make enough money? If they make this much or they're paying this much in rent, what do they qualify for? So it's not all about getting in a house right away. It's about positioning yourself so that when you're ready six months, 12 months, 18 months down the road, that you are the best that you can be to win out the other bids on a property. Yes, I got a lot of questions about that too when I put your picture up that people wanted to know. So cornerstonefirstfinancial.com yep. is where people could, that's your website. Cornerstonefirst.com. Cornerstone first, thank you. Com. Cornerstonefirst.com. Sure. Mm-hmm. You can go to hayfrage.com too. I've that's got right. your your banner ad right there so people can click on that. Um, but this is my other question to you and I always I really wanted to know in doing research now and looking at our home. And I agree, we'll we'll find a place. I just have champagne taste on yeah. a real on beer, a beer yeah, budget. Right? Yeah, <laughs> major beer budget, like PBR budget. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really so no anyway. Um, but when you go to these like new properties, they're always saying to you, like, oh, go with our 
people because then we will, uh, you know, we'll waive all your closing costs. So then I got to thinking, like, when we were looking, I was like, wait, how does Mark, how do, how is Cornerstone first better or, like, combat that? You so, know what I mean? So the way that you're getting that, you know, the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true. Okay. So you're going to run into primarily, like, new construction. They'll say, if you go with our lender, we'll pay 10000 towards closing or we'll give you granite countertops or um, sub-zero refrigerator. The way they're doing that is by upping your interest rate. Oh. And then getting money back, and that's how they're luring you in, is with those offers. Because a lot of people going to new construction aren't going to be doing what you're doing, which is shopping around and yep. finding that we have the lowest rate. And so we will give you the bottom rate, but we're not giving you the $10,000. If you want a higher interest rate, yeah. I say I'll wow. meet or beat anyone out there, and that's how we do it. So if you came to me and said, hey, this, uh, this construction company is going to give me $10,000, I'll do the same thing, but I'm going to get this higher interest rate. You don't you don't want that. You want the lowest interest rate because you're going to be in this house for a long period of time. Love it. Yeah. Okay, good. I was like, I got to ask you that. So mm-hmm. cornerstonefirst.com. Yep. Can people call you as well? What's Absolutely. the best number to reach you? It's 202-625-1221. Okay. 202-625-1221. And my Twitter handle, which you and I yes. love to go back and forth, is at cornerstone1st for Cornerstone First. Awesome. Yes. Okay, great. Well, I'm excited. We're getting closer to finding our own place. I love place. it. I, I love it. Yes, yes. And like I said, your listeners are wonderful. Yes. And- hey, Frage listeners. Yeah, when you call Mark, be sure to tell Mark that you heard about him from the Hey Frage podcast. And uh, yeah, like you said, do all the legwork now. Get mm-hmm. qualified for the mortgage. Find out what you need to be saving, what you need to be putting away, how your credit is. Um, and you and your team take care of all that. So Absolutely. you're ready to go. And there's a statistic that I just read last week that says that you're 10 times more likely to be a millionaire if you're a homeowner. Really? Yeah, absolutely true. No kidding. So therefore, you know, do your due diligence now. Give us a call and we will get you the best deal out there. And definitely tell us that you heard us on the Hey Frage podcast. I love that. And okay. we will take care of you. And we're on, a, on the right path. Awesome. Mark, thanks so much. I was I've been dying to ask you that question. Okay, we'll see <laughs> you good. soon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, you guys, we end Monday's show every Monday reading your pineapple mail, which is all your mail that you send to Sarah at HeyFrage.com. You can also, of course, follow me on social media. It's at HeyFrage. Um, and then you can ask for advice. You can weigh in on the show. So um, Desi writes in and she says, hey, Sarah and crew, listening to your podcast about the secret text to get out of something if you feel uncomfortable in college, my roommate and myself have a hookup keyword. So we did this story a couple of weeks ago where it's parents are now just texting a capital X to their parents to, yes. or, or kids are texting their parents an X and that X signals that something is wrong like if they're spending the night at someone's house or they're out at a bar and essentially the parents write back and they they write something to the effect of like um you know, "Hey, need you at home." And then the kid writes, "Okay, what time will you be here?" Be there in like 20 minutes or whatever. So then like if someone's looking at your tags, it looks like something happened at home, but it really didn't. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole code system you have. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. Desi writes, um, in college, my roommate and myself had a hookup code word. If one of us called or texted saying, hey, are you in the room? That was code for say yes and you're studying and not leaving. If we asked what time you will be home was be home was i uh, going to bring a guy over is that okay and if so leave this helped when the guy was right there and sometimes you didn't want to hook up and they didn't take the hint it worked a lot and it was very nice having a friend on this love Uh, that she says that also when she was a kid her parents had a secret code word and it was (laughs) scooby-doo so basically like if someone came to your school to pick you up they'd have to say scooby-doo brilliant i like this uh, from a longtime listener, she says, Sarah, per usual, I enjoyed the podcast. The chatter about Doja Cat that you guys did a couple of weeks ago kind of ticked me off, though. She tweeted the F word back in 2015. That wasn't that long ago. Twitter and social media wasn't new. She was in high school when she tweeted about how many times we are going to how many times are we going to continue to excuse people for their behavior because, quote, they were young. Free speech does not mean you can say whatever the hell you want without consequences. I hate when people throw free speech around to justify saying some foul hurtful shit people really don't know what the first amendment is about it's protecting american speech from being hindered or silenced by the government period when you have nine-year-olds killing themselves because they are being bullied for being gay i cannot give someone who uses hate speech a speech a pass if she's truly sorry then she should visit a risk queer youth center and actually put her money where her apology is so there you go i think that's good i love when listeners 
write in like this because I was the one that was saying, you know, it was, it was like years ago. And I love to hear this because it's true. We shouldn't be taking hate speech lightly. Well, you know what? It's funny. I don't think I realized with the Doja Cat story. And, and Doja Cat, of course, has that very popular Moo song that we've played. And I did a spoof of that people hated. And yeah. essentially were like, you're like potato salad with raisins. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I, I am. So anyway, people were very upset. But, we were, but then after I did that and people were shitting on me, then Doja Cat from 2015 tweeted out the F word. And then she was like, I think... I think I like gay people. I never want to say anything to hurt them. I think I like gay people. And people are like, what kind of half ass apology is that? And to date, I do not think that Doja has done anything for like an apology. LGBTQ. Right? I, well, she can't. I mean, she got a ton of shit. Like people were like, I'm not buying your tickets. She's trying to go on tour. She's coming here to D.C. in October. So then she like put out this like apology and kind of got off social media for a week. But now I see she's back on and. I don't know if she's done anything else. So I think that's a good good email. Uh, lastly, hey girl, just an FYI. Kingstown in Alexandria is a little neighborhood with a range of affordable houses. Look up a zip code, 22315. It's super cute and easy to get to the city depending on where you live. So you can take Huntington or Franconia Metro. I personally love living here. I didn't want to move further out either, but I needed some quiet and some space. So thank you for that. I would love to live in Alexandria. That would be like the place I want to live, but I think it's too far from for Dan. Oh, because he right, works he at Lawn County. Really yeah. Well, I'm in Alexandria all the time, so that'd be great if you um, decided to move there. Really, you Thanks. are. You're in Alexandria. That's where my boyfriend lives. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, so I'm there. I'm there. I mean, okay. I'm not there all it's a big, the time. It's but... really far away from well, Arlington. No, what I'm really thinking is you can just go over there and just feed the birds, and then I'll say that I did. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Look, we love you guys so much. Be sure to share today's episode. Uh, today's episode, we are giving away a True Food Kitchen fifty dollars gift card, so you and your love can go have a organic romantic kale dinner on us how does that sound share it away you guys we absolutely love you thank you for listening to hey fresh pod we'll see you on wednesday bye everybody Cast pod, Cast pod. Hey, Fraser, bye.